Welcome to Connor Ewart's senior speech. <laughs> Connor is joined today by his parents, Angela and Chris Ewart, and special guests, Dina Taylor, Amy Nesbitt, and Rochelle Forge. Let's give them a warm welcome. <laughs> Connor came to Augusta Prep in the fourth grade. Since his arrival in the upper school, he has jumped into the Caspian Troop 1324. He will, he will have performed in over 10 shows throughout high school, even vaulting into lead roles. <laughs> there aren't a lot of parkour puns. Somehow, Connor also balances being the current vice president of the chess club, and you might have seen him with his bandmates in Undecided, playing drums every day during break, lunch, and study hall. Outside of prep, Connor has poured his remaining energy and mental agility into the mastery of parkour. And he landed a job as a parkour coach at Hayden's Gymnastics, where he has worked for the past two years, five days a week, year-round. Somehow, Connor tucks in voice lessons. Oh, and he also films and edits videos because that's just how he rolls. <laughs> Would you please join me in welcoming Connor to the stage? These are all past and current hobbies that I have spent countless hours mastering. All these hobbies have something in common, though they might seem quite different. They're all completely and utterly useless. <laughs> no one in their right mind would actually consider pursuing one of these activities as a profession, unless they were perfectly happy with living out of their car for the rest of their life. These talents accomplish two goals. They're visually pleasing to watch, and they make me feel cool. So. Naturally, whenever I saw my friend Ethan Turner running across the side of the wall in sixth grade, I was quite intrigued. I walked up to him and said, hey, that was pretty cool. What are you doing? Parkour. <laughs> Ethan was about to flip my world upside down as he introduced me to parkour and free running. It had everything I ever wanted. High flying action with no rules, and most importantly, it looked pretty freaking cool. But before I talk more about my passion, before I talk more about my passion, I would like to clear up some common misconceptions associated with the sport. First off, what is the difference between parkour and free running? Parkour is the discipline of getting from A to B as quickly as possible, using running, climbing, vaulting, and jumping. Free running is quite similar, traversing over objects and long distances, but with the added bonus of acrobatics. These acrobatics are almost always purely aesthetic and contain no actual purpose. Here is an example of how a practitioner of each sport would get from one side of the picnic table to the other. <laughs> also, on a slight tangent, I know that some people in the audience may know that Ethan Turner is one of the top trickers in the world today. Tricking, however, is not the same as parkour, as it utilizes kicks, and twists in a slightly different manner. Here's how a tricker would use a picnic table in their training. <laughs> so, now that we have a general understanding of the sport, how did it start? May 8, 1902, Mount Pele erupted on the French island of Martinique, instantly killing almost 30,000 people. One of the survivors, a French naval officer by the name of George Herbert, rounded up the remaining Europeans and indigenous people and organized an evacuation. Herbert noticed as they traversed over the obstacles in their path and, the indigenous, and noticed that the indigenous tribes were much more skilled and easily left the Europeans in the dust. Based on these observations, Herbert realized that the average human being had lost their ability to move in environments that were not familiar to them on a daily basis. Herbert then moved on to develop a new form of training known as la méthode naturelle, or the natural method. The French military soon adopted these trainings for their special forces under the terms parkours du combat, aka the path of the warrior. Fast forward to the 1990s, French Special Forces veteran Raymond Bell taught his son David about the parkours du combat that he used while in the military. 
David and his friends then went out to the streets and began adapting these teachings into their natural setting. As a result, David had created a new discipline known as parkour. Sebastian Kukan, one of David Bell's closest friends at the time, began to experiment with the techniques used in parkour and began to expand upon them. Flips and twists were added into the movement, allowing for more creativity and inspiration to be brought in from other sports and disciplines. Thus was born the sport of free running. Buchanan and Bell later split ties as they had different views on the ways that parkour should grow. Parkour and free running quickly became a breakout hit, sparking interest all over the globe. The internet was exploding with new videos of insane jumps over buildings and crazy flips from height. Parkour gyms began popping up everywhere. For instance, the Tempest Free Running Academy, Tempest Free Running Academy in California, Airwhip Academy in Sweden, uh, Apex Movement in Colorado, and even Hayden's Parkour here in Augusta. This sudden swell in popularity attracted the attention of big sponsorship companies with the likes of Red Bull and GoPro. And with sponsorships comes competition. Competition in parkour and freerunning has always been a big topic of debate. Many purists, such as David Bell and Sebastian Buchan, believe that parkour should be left to its bare essentials and trained only as a discipline. Some also argue that in competition, freerunners lose their creativity and individuality. When parkour is placed into a competition format, its participants are forced to focus on performing the biggest tricks. The style and flow of the movement is generally lost as the judge's favorite, flashier runs that wow the audience. Of course, there is always a counter-argument. Competitions often serve to push the boundaries of the sport. With competition, free runners constantly have to innovate to up the game. Sometimes completely new moves are created as top free runners strive to improve. They then showcase to the judges techniques that were never before believed to be possible. Some fine examples would be Kaylin Chan's screwdriver prong gainer pull. <laughs> descriptions involve scaling skyscrapers or flipping down flights of stairs. <laughs> because of this, professional free runners have limited options when it comes to finding work. One way to make money is by competing in competitions such as the Red Bull Art of Motion or the Airwood Challenge. The amount of money you earn can vary by competition. One of the biggest competitions that's happened this year happened recently in Tampa, Florida, known as the WFPF World Cup Series. First place prize was $2,000. $2,000, uh, followed by $1,250 per second, and $900 per third. Of course, the only way to earn money is by being among the best, and still not many competitions can earn you this much money. And if you are not fortunate enough to travel and compete in all these competitions, you can find work as a parkour coach at a local gym. As a parkour coach, the pay is low, but the joy of teaching students and having a gym to train in is enough. Some professional free runners also tend to lend their talents to the screen. Many directors seek out parkour athletes as stunt actors to perform death-defying stunts in their film. In fact, some of you might remember the famous chase scene from Casino Royale in 2006. Uh, Sebastian Foucan was the criminal in this particular scene. Of the three professional routes one may take as a free runner, stunt acting is by far the highest pay. However, it is also the hardest job to acquire. The film industry is based on, con on connections, and sometimes just having great, great skill in parkour doesn't cut it. Since parkour is in its own right an art form, recording oneself and making videos is a common form of expression amongst athletes. Many athletes will post videos of themselves on social media to show off their skills and connect with other practitioners of the sport. I myself have made over 270 different videos throughout the six years I've been training. Here's a compilation of a few of my favorite clips. <laughs> Thank you. 
Earlier in my speech, I insinuated that parkour is a useless sport that is a complete waste of time. On the surface, this assumption may appear to be true, but parkour is more than just a bunch of idiots jumping off of buildings. According to Dan Edwards' article in The Guardian about why he loves parkour, quote, parkour is about reminding yourself that your body and mind are evolved to adapt to, overcome, and manage an enormous variety of challenges and testing scenarios. And that in fact, the process of doing so is therefore the best way to maintain your health and natural function, end quote. Meaning that in parkour, there are no limits. Our bodies were always meant to do these tasks, but in our transition to an industrialized society, we've traded these skills for a chair and a device. Modern society has created a fear of failure and a fear of adversity due to the safety nets applied to every aspect of life. This can even be related to a child's need to play. In fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics states, that, quote, play allows children to <laughs> use their creativity while developing their imagination, dexterity, and physical, cognitive, and emotional strength. Play is important to healthy brain development, end quote. And thus, without play, one becomes confined to the uncertainties of the world. By exposing yourself to new experiences, you can overcome fear and make the impossible possible. This, for me, is the true benefit of parkour. As I'm sure you can tell, my passion for parkour and freerunning is endless. I've met some of my greatest friends, earned a fantastic job as a parkour coach, and competed in competitions all over the East Coast. I hope that you've learned something today and now have some insight into why I spent the last six years of my life wasting my time on this sport. If you could take something away from this speech, I would tell you to find something that you're passionate about and pursue it, especially if you think it's cool. I would like also to leave you with some wise words from Storer Blogs, Callum Powell. If you like to think you do parkour with the intention of using your skills to get from A to B for real-world emergency application, you're better off practicing long-distance running, sprinting, driving, carjacking, hot-wiring cars, and, and picking bike locks. If you just want to do jumps, continue as you are." End quote. 